Oh well, guys, punk rat another video, another day, another punk rat phase two video. This time with a piece covering more major differences again. I've done a video like this between private servers and classic, original vanilla and classic, and I figured another one was warranted for the massive changes being implemented this week with the introduction of PvP. Things are about to get real toxic, and I don't think that's <laughs> too much of an exaggeration. If you get triggered easily by this sort of stuff in game, you might want to just get cozy and stay in Stormwind for the remainder of your game time. But on a real note, the game's about to get flipped on its head. So let's cover some of the most major cultural changes coming to Classic in Phase 2 PvP. So that's the video, here's the most major changes between Classic WoW with and without the PvP system. Let's get into it. Alright, now the first one I mentioned earlier we're gonna go right for the most toxic one. It's not only camping, but a specific type of camping that is just so degenerate. We're talking about flight path camping. Now, you might have seen this, you know, every now and then during peak raid hours on raid nights, like on my server specifically on Tuesday nights. Hordies kind of find it funny to just stay at Thorin Point right at the flight NPC for the Alliance guys, form a group there, and then as people are landing for their raid, they'll instantly just kill everyone. We usually have to have people scouting Thorium Point and Marshall's Refuge in order to get an idea of what the scope looks like just to save ourselves that extra trouble or to not lose our world buffs. In fact, last week we got a bunch of people who went early without listening to the scouting information and they got absolutely obliterated. But this is probably going to be something that's way more widespread throughout the entire game. People are most likely going to be camping specific spawn locations or flight spawn locations. I really wouldn't be surprised if somewhere like Tanaris, there's a rogue or a couple mages around the rock just waiting there to frog bolt or cheap shot somebody that lands. It's all about honor and there's no fair game. It's just grind as much honor as you possibly can. The PvP system is coming out and nobody's even close to rank 14 so right now the first week is just going to be about getting a head start over all the other people, getting that number one spot on the honor ladder. Now in relation to flight path camping we've got another one which we've seen a lot of so far but it's about to explode especially considering on the big servers we've been layered for these last couple months. We're talking about pathway camping. So for the most part you've probably seen people in Black Rock Mountains right at the gate camping the chain or something like that. Camping a chokehold or a funnel point where players have to go by. Now don't be mistaken, Black Rock Mountain is not the only place where this exists. Once PvP comes out, there's going to be so many choke points around the entire world that are going to be camped. One that's pretty close to Black Rock Mountain is Kargath. That little tunnel that leads from the Badlands into Searing Gorge is going to be hard to camp. The one from Red Ridge maybe, although that one I'd say is less populated. Red Ridge to Burning Steps could definitely be camped. Shimmering Flats headed into Tanaris, quite possibly. Feralis headed into Desolus, why not? I really wouldn't be surprised if most choke points across the map or across the world of Azeroth are camped at this point. So this is something that I definitely get ready for. Alright, so this next difference is related to the unspoken rule. So you've probably heard me mention this many times before, that before the PvP system gets implemented on every server that I've ever played launch, there's always an unspoken rule between between people. It's a fresh launch and people kind of just want to level as fast as possible. If you leveled on the release of Classic, you know that there was a good amount of PvP going on, especially with specific players early, but for the most part, people just let you do what you were doing or they were so focused on being efficient within their own questing route that they would just ignore you. And a couple months later, it completely died down. Everyone's so focused on pre-raid BIS, enchants, leveling their alts, what it is just getting ready for phase two, I guess in a way, that there really hasn't been any PvP combat or at least marginal PvP combat to what you'd expect. Now, obviously, the only reward that you get from PvPing in general is losing your gold to wasting consumables, and I guess the enjoyment of PvPing. There's nothing really tangible, but now things are about to change. There's the ranking system, so the unspoken rule has just been thrown in the garbage. Regardless of what level threshold you're at, the moment you're out of those early spots that you don't get PvP flagged in, the moment you get into contested zones, it's time to fight for your life. You're now in the wild. Survival of the fittest is the only way to describe it. So be ready to fend for yourself and be ready to battle because PvP is inescapable at this point. All right, now this next one is related, I guess, closer to the first one. We're just talking about corpse camping or even graveyard camping. This is just by virtue of the fact that PvP is going to be more prevalent to begin with. When you're talking about a battle of egos within a video game, it can get a bit spicy, let's say. If you kill somebody and you make them angry or you kill somebody, I guess, in a little bit of a scummy manner while they were 
were fighting a mob or something like that, well, expect that person to get real angry and want to take out that anger on you. There's gonna be a lot more corpse camping in general. And even from an honor grind perspective, I mean, it's not the greatest thing to do just because there's actually a diminishing return for each time that you kill your enemy, but it's only 10%, so the first couple kills are actually pretty decent. And if you can't find anyone else, then you might as well kill the free honor in front of you. And I think there's just gonna be a lot of griefers too. There's probably gonna be people where they might not even be getting honor at all, or they might be right in that threshold to claim the honor from you, meaning if you're level 48 and a level 60 is camping that zone, he will actually get honor from every 48 that he kills. So expect people to target easy prey. And this potentially means being camped while you're trying to do a quest and you can't layer off anymore. So you're gonna have to figure something out. And that's why it's super important to get your epic mount fast so you can just res, hopefully get the mount off and just bolt out of there. With a slow mount, you don't stand a chance. So this next one is related to the economy and it's a really obvious one. It's the increase in price or the increase in demand for PvP specific items. One that I could think of right off the top of my head is Oily Blackmouth. I've been buying a good amount of these or at least I buy them when I find them for super cheap. A couple days ago, I bought a couple stacks for five gold each. I don't know if that person made a mistake and he meant to post 10 for five gold each, but I found stacks of 20 for five gold and I nabbed them real quick. These are probably going to fly and I assume that early, early on, they're probably going to be at around four times the value that I bought them at. We've got Librem of Constitution, of course, which is the plus 100 HP enchant that you get from the Librem on your legs and helm. And these are skyrocketing. I've seen them go up like 10% almost every single day that I check. We're at like 120, 130 gold last time. And a couple days prior, they were at like 70. So this is just the way it plays out. When people are looking for something and there's limited supply, then obviously the price is going to go up. And pretty much every PvP consumable right now, especially for the top rankers, is in demand. And a little tidbit that we could add on here is Twink Gear. Although I'd say it's not the time for Twinks just yet. Twinks generally revolve around BG brackets. The 19 Twink bracket is all about Warsong Gulch. 39 to 49 is all about AB, obviously. So I'd say Phase 3 and Phase 4 are really when Twink items are going to fly. So you still have a little bit of time especially for the higher level twink items to start investing and some of these items I'm not gonna say which ones specifically because I'm targeting a couple are really really cheap right now and I mean really really cheap so you might want to take a look at that all right now this one is guaranteed to be a major difference that you're gonna notice we're talking about ambush squads damn Somali pirates out in the world groups of five that are gonna be camping specific locations for the most part you might have been ganked by a couple guys that just happened to be there or just one dude but now it's on farm time and a lot of people farm honor in groups of five dedicated players together you might question why would they do that considering that they're splitting honor but it could be much more effective being a five man unit that just crushes every battle that they engage in rather than having that 50 50 chance of potentially losing and having to corpse run back just having a super strong five man almost like a little pre-made out in the world and capping one little spot could be really lucrative in terms of honor grind so there's gonna be roaming bandito bands expect them around and kind of to go back on the first point that I made talking about choke point camping well expect groups of five and a couple of them and expect a ton of five man groups out in the black rock mountain area all day so roaming groups of banditos definitely a thing the uga gang is coming for you guys and i'd also expect some groups of rogues as well you might go in some spot think that you're safe and there's rogues and feral druids lurking in the bushes everywhere so expect to get ambushed that's gonna happen this next change is player specific but it's something that you're gonna see a whole lot more of that's a hundred percent and i know this because because pretty much everyone that I know or everyone around me in my guild and myself as well have been focused on this in preparation for phase two. People are going to start having bigger health pools. Most people that I know that have been focused on PvP or getting ready for PvP have obviously been getting all their consumables, their engineering, but the most important thing is getting a PvP set. If you notice a lot of that raid gear out there, a lot of the pre-raid gear has no stamina on it. People have been really focused on enchanting with stamina and getting full PvP sets or sets that have stamina on them. So if you're fighting a mage and you're expecting that guy to have like 2500 HP, he might have 4k with a couple little buffs plus the shield. People are going to be tankier. A lot of the end game guys are kind of done with their molten core progression, or not necessarily molten core progression, but constantly getting ready for molten core. They're not really running dungeons, they're just sitting there waiting for molten core. They do a run, they get what they get, and then they move on. These guys are always going to be in their PvP gear. So if you're just a little guy with less than 3000 HP, you're definitely going to be at a disadvantage. If it's an equal skill matchup, the guy with more HP is is probably gonna win unless you get a lucky crit. So I'd say you probably want to get a stamina set to get on equal playing field with all the tryhards. And hunters, you might want to go with hybrid survival spec. It's viable enough to raid with and you'll get those crucial talents that help you in PvP. And I guess we could tack that on to this change as well. Not only will people have 
new item sets or PvP sets with more stamina, but a lot more people are going to be PvP specs, specifically rogues and mages, I'd say is the biggest one. Rogues are going to be Hemo, and mages might be Elemental, might be PvP Frost. Okay, so this is the last one on the list, and it's probably one of the more obvious ones. It's kind of in the same line as the gear thing, where it's all about preparation. People have been preparing for Phase 2 for months now, so expect them to have huge stocks of consumables, whether it's Sapper Charges, Grenades, Healing Potions, Mana Potions, Dark Runes, Bandages, Limited Invulnerability Potion, pretty much anything that you can think of, people have it, at least the tryhards, and they'll probably have a good amount of them. They'll always have something to use to give them an edge in battle. So if you're going into a fight against someone, understand that they might have a stacked deck. The only way to equalize the playing field is to either outskill them or stack your own deck. But even if you outskill them sometimes, one healing potion or one specific consumable could swing the fight for them regardless. So this is something that if you easily get frustrated and rage in game, <laughs> you might get really pissed off when people always having a health potion, always having a limited invulnerability potion, magic dust, pretty much you name it, people are going to have it out there. And that's really what makes vanilla fun is that you have all of these incredibly powerful items and unique ways that you can play the game that just make it so much more exciting and you never know what you're going to get. There's always a trump card. So that's something I'd say just be wary of and it's definitely going to be something that you're going to see a lot. In the past, no one really cared. They didn't want to expend their consumables. They were kind of saving them for phase two. But now you're worth honor and popping a pot is definitely worth not dying, especially if you're taking honor grind seriously. You don't want to have to run back. You're trying to get as much honor throughout the day as possible. Losing is not an option. So there you have it. Those are the major changes to expect on Thursday once the new patch hits live servers for the first time. It's gonna be real crazy, especially on big servers for the first couple days. You might want to stay inside, kids. I mean, I for one can't wait to enter the war zone, and hopefully you guys feel the same way. You know, win or lose, the constant battle and dangerous nature of the open world is just an added level of depth on top of the already immersive classic experience. So pack your bags with all the potions, gadgets that you need to make it out alive. Make sure you have a medic and get ready for your military deployment soldiers. World PvP calls, now let's just hope you don't get corpse camped too much. <laughs> if you want to support my videos, make sure to leave a like, comment, subscribe, of course, you know the drill soldiers. Hit the notification bell to be notified every single time I post a new video straight out of the render oven. And with that said, thanks for watching, and I'll see you on the next one. Peace.